The earthly mother's themes are nature and earth awareness. Her symbols are trees. The Essene goddess embodies nature and teaches us how to live in harmony with the mother. The Essenes portray her with the elements, personified as four angels, earth, air, fire, water. Plus two companions named Join Life, all helping the earthly mother in her work. It was describing something which most people need to realize is the Holy Spirit. I don't think many of them will get it. Uh, personified as four angels, earth, air, fire, and water. But there is a belief that there is a fifth element. And you know, it's from the movie there's a big belief in it. The fifth element, and the fifth element is spirit, and it lies at the center of these four. Four elements, earth, air, fire, and water, when looked at as like directions on a compass, north, south, east, and west, at the center of that lies spirit. The Essenes illustrated their relationship with the spiritual and natural forces with a symbol called the Tree of Life. The roots represent earthly forces or powers. The earthly mother and her angels of sun, water, air, earth, life, and joy. The seven branches represent the cosmic powers, the heavenly father and his angels, of power, love, wisdom, eternal life, creative work, and peace. These are the Essene angels of the invisible and visible worlds. Here is a highlight from the Essene Gospel of Peace, where Jesus is teaching about the earthly mother. Here's what Jesus said. Honor thy earthly mother, that thy days may be long upon the land. And honor the heavenly father, that eternal life be thine in the heavens. Thou shalt greet the earthly mother on the morning of the Sabbath. Thou shalt greet the angel of earth on the second morning. Thou shalt greet the angel of life on the third morning. Thou shalt greet the angel of joy on the fourth morning. Thou shalt greet the angel of sun in the fifth morning. Thou shalt greet the angel of water on the sixth morning. Thou shalt greet the angel of air on the seventh morning. Now all these angels of the earthly mother shall thou greet and consecrate thyself to them, that thou mayest enter the infinite garden where stands the tree of life. Thou shalt worship thy heavenly Father on the evening of the Sabbath. Thou shalt commune with the angel of eternal life on the second evening. Thou shalt commune with the angel of work on the third evening. Thou shalt commune with the angel of peace on the fourth evening. Thou shalt commune with the angel of power on the fifth evening. Thou shalt commune with the angel of love on the sixth evening. And thou shalt commune with the angel of wisdom on the seventh evening. All these angels of the heavenly Father shalt thou commune with, that thy soul may bathe in the fountain of light and enter into the sea of eternity. The seventh day is the Sabbath. Thou shalt remember it. Keep it holy. For good or for bad, life and nature are run by laws that we cannot do anything about, much less change. The faster we accept this, the more at peace we can become. Peace comes in our lives by understanding our limits, our limitations. Knowing the natural limits set in place by accepting these facts and working with them rather than fighting them, we can and will find peace. Mother Earth is considered sacred in the worldview of indigenous peoples and nations. In the 1960s, James Lovelock formulated the Gaia Hypothesis. It states that all life and all living things on this planet are a part of a single, all-encompassing global entity or consciousness. He named it Gaia. 
It is this global consciousness, Mother Gaia, that makes our planet capable of supporting life while all our near neighbors in the solar system are barren and lifeless. Then this, from the Castle's Dictionary of Classical Mythology by Jenny March, the first Greek god was actually a goddess. She is Gaia, or Mother Earth, who created herself out of the primordial chaos. From her fertile womb, all life sprang, and unto Mother Earth, all living things must return after their allotted span of life is over. Gaia, as Mother Nature personifies the entire ecosystem of planet Earth. Mother Nature is always working to achieve and maintain harmony, wholeness, and balance with the environment. Mother Nature heals, nurtures, supports all life on this planet, all and ultimately all life and health depend on her. In time, nature heals all else. The way of Mother Gaia is the passive, feminine, yin way of healing. All we need to do to regain our health is to return to the bosom of Mother Earth and live in accordance with her laws. Mother Nature is a healing goddess. Live in balance with Mother Earth and health and healing are yours. Violate her laws and get out of balance and you pay the price in suffering and disease. Let me give you a handful of quotes about our Mother Earth. Behind every cloud is another cloud. Judy Garland. If you can't be in awe of Mother Nature, there's something wrong with you. Alex Trebek. My soul can find no staircase to heaven unless it be through Earth's loveliness. Michael Angelo. Study nature, love nature, stay close to nature. It'll never fail you. Frank Lloyd Wright. And William Woodsworth said, The ocean is a mighty harmonist. Don't you think the act of living in harmony would bring us lasting peace? Harmony, as all musicians know, is a pleasing arrangement of different notes or parts. You get harmony when different notes are brought together and complement the parts. Harmony is not unison. You don't get harmony by everyone playing the same note. Harmony does not mean everyone has to think the same or do the same. Harmony is not discord. Discord is when notes are brought together in such a way that one note diminishes the others. Live in harmony with another is to live in such a way that you enrich and complement each other. Together, you are more than any of you would be on your own. Let's finish with something from 1 Peter 3, 8 through 11. Finally, everyone must live in harmony. Be sympathetic. Love each other. Have compassion. And be humble. Don't pay people back with the evil they do to you. Or ridicule those who ridicule you. Instead, bless them. Because you were called to inherit a blessing. People who want to live a full life and enjoy good days must keep their tongues from saying evil things and their lips from speaking deceitful things. They must turn away from evil and do good. They must seek peace 